Hey YouTube, what's going on? It is Jaxer back with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the deck on the screen. Probably the most fun deck in all of Clash Royale right now. You have the Lumberjack that rages literally everything up. You have the Bandit to get in that quick chain dash kind of action going on, get to the tower real quick, pressure when they're at low elixir. Ice Golem is kind of like another tank ground unit if you don't have Bandit or Lumberjack in cycle. Magic Archer and the Inferno Dragon, they're going to be your value getter units. Going to be able to just provide infinite value. Inferno Dragon kills the tanks. Magic Archer sits back, kills off the swarm. And then you have Barbarrel Snowball as your spells and the Wind Condition as the Ram Rider. This deck is just so, so good, like synergy wise. Everything goes together. The Lumberjack can rage up pretty much every all of these cards here. And can really change the interactions. You can use the barbell to win battles at the bridge. Get those nice, really great counter pushes going. And the way you're going to want to play this deck is you're going to want to do a simp for the support strategy. So you're going to want to play... The two things you want to be simping for are your Inferno Dragon and your Magic Archer. These cards are really going to allow you to turn the tide of a battle into your favor. And you want to be doing this by protecting them with the Ice Golem and especially the Lumberjack. Lumberjack is what makes this all come together. You can play him at the bridge with your Inferno Dragon, and when he dies, your Inferno Dragon will rage up. It'll do even more. Same with the Magic Archer when it crosses through, and you can go with a Ram Rider Bandit to support. This deck is just so perfectly balanced together, and it makes it so much fun. We all know that Wero does absolutely insane every season. He finishes top three. He's finished top three every month for the past six months. So this is a really good deck, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. A few notes before we get into the video. I'm currently residing in a clan called Clash Heads. If you have a 6k PB and will get 500 weekly fame for, make sure to join up. We have a P.E.K.K.A. Royale Discord server where we have tips and guides on pretty much every matchup. I'll be answering your questions too in that server. And I also completed a classic challenge. Let me go find that real quick. I also completed a classic challenge yesterday with my friend uh, Red Arrow, aka Jaywek. I don't know how to pronounce that. But I completed a Clash Royale, or Classic Challenge, excuse me, with Pekka Bird Spam live on his channel. I go, I have a lot of commentary. I go into some of the tips you want to be following to win the Classic Challenge. So if you want to see a uh, specialized Classic Challenge video with Pekka Bird Spam, make sure to go and check it out. I'm going to put it, the video on the uh, screen, and I'll put a link in the description. It'll also be the pinned comment on this video. So make sure to go check that out. I will have the Classic Challenge video, just like how to win one in general, out in I think about a week or so. So I can't wait to upload that for you guys. Alright, so to start off the video, we're going to cop into this top replay right here. It's a really weird deck, but it demonstrates exactly how you want to be playing this deck. And just to show like how much success I've been having with it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 game win streak, 1 loss, then 8, 9, 10 wins with it, and only 1 loss on this push. So it's just going to be a really great video for you guys. I'm really excited to share this one, and we'll hop right into the, the replay now. So... Like I said, this deck is a sim for the support. You want to keep your Inferno Dragon, you want to keep your Magic Archers alive at all costs so they can continue getting you the value here. And I wasn't paying attention for the first like few seconds, and I saw you had the Skeleton Barrel. So I clicked play an Inferno Dragon and then a Bar Barrel. And I screwed up the Bar Barrel, but we don't take any damage, which is nice. So now we have a slight counter push, but I can't really do anything with that. I don't want to fireball the firecracker, because if he has like barbs or something something like that, I'm just going to end up losing the game. See, Inferno Dragon gets a lot of damage, and when I hit 10, I just play an Ice Golem. So here, I go with my Lumberjack. It's my highest DPS unit, and I don't want to play a Ram Rider in case he has a Swarm that can slow her stun down and the firecracker. So I just play a Magic Archer, and I play it in that position. And this is the kind of value I'm talking about. It kills the Inferno Dragon. It kills the... Um, it kills the firecracker, and I know since that magic archer just got so much value, and I defended, even though I was down before, now that I've defended, we're about even, but I have the magic archer on the field, which means he's still able to get more value, he's going to have to be killed, so I'm going to support it with a ram rider, simp for him, like I said, and it's going to get a lot of damage, because he's going to scar me, but the magic archer is going to clean it all up, and we get the ram rider charge, and he doesn't get any, I think he gets like one hit of geometry here, which is nice. And then I fail my bandit. The skeletons came around. But it's going to end up being a good defense. We don't get any counter push out of the bandit. But that's perfectly fine. We're even on elixir. And we're up a couple hundred damage. Which is a spot where you want to be in. So. Since I'm not at 10 elixir here. I'm going to wait for the barbell. I'm fine taking 100 or how much damage the skeleton barrel drops. I don't want to play an inferno dragon and a barbell. That's way too much elixir. Plus I'm still not exactly sure what he has in his deck. He's played only a few few cards. So just cycle my Ice Golem on the back, my cheapest uh, card, 
and it's my slowest card. And slow is good in this deck. You can build up a big push. Like, I will passively cycle my Inferno Dragons in the back when I don't know what to do. Because I can protect it at the bridge and build up like a Lumberjack and put a Ram Rider and then a late Magic Archer. And it's really nice because if they have to play something into the Inferno Dragon, it's gotten the value to make sure that when you push like that, you're not over committing. So we activate our King. I didn't even mean to do that. I meant to place the Magic Archer in the other lane so the Firecracker wouldn't reach. But he goes in with an interesting set of Zappies. So I just cycle Inferno Dragon in the back to mirror his Inferno Dragon. And now I'm going to Fireball this. I don't want that my Inferno Dragon getting Perma Reset. And I need to make sure my Inferno Dragon wins the bridge battle. So I go with a Ram Rider here. And I do this to stun the RG. I don't want to play a Lumberjack. Just because like um, it's not going to do enough damage. If I play a Ram Rider, it's going to force something behind it. So that his RG like has... Or, so that my Ram Rider has to divide her snares. But if he doesn't play anything on it, she holds him up for long enough for me to play a Bandit. And he gets a lot less damage. Plus he still has to respond to the Ram Rider on his side of the tower. So he goes with Skarmy, I go with a quick bar barrel, double hits and he's able to get down some bats to stop the Inferno Dragon. But the Ram Rider bar barrel combo is really good. I go with my Bandit just to make sure that the RG doesn't get too too much damage. Bar barrel gets a lot of damage and the Firecracker is rendered pretty much useless by the double Ram Rider snare. So I just go in with an Ice Golem here to make sure that I tank her shot. She dies in one hit so she wouldn't have gotten a shot anyway. But then I Magic Archer after bleeding a little bit of Elixir, that was a kind of a mistake. I Magic Archer and this, this is a key point in the match. This Magic Archer is going to stay alive for the rest of the game. Since I have the Magic Archer down, he can't kill it, because now I know at this point he doesn't have a spell. I go Lumberjack, Ram Rider, and this Magic Archer is going to get so much value. Anything he plays on defense here is going to get caught in the Magic Archer's bolt, and he can't kill it. I'm going to keep protecting him. I play my Bandit, I play the Bar Barrel to keep him alive, I play an Ice Golem here to block for the Dark Prince, and then I go in again. I'm cycled all the way back, that's how long this Magic Archer's been alive. Lumberjack, Inferno Dragon... And he's out of Elixir. He's got to keep playing a Skarmy. He can't kill this Magic Archer. So I'm going to keep simping. Always stay simping for the Magic Archer. He plays a Skeleton Barrel. It's killing the bats. It killed this Skeleton Barrel. The Inferno Dragon's raged it up. It stays alive for over 35 seconds, which is just amazing. He got so much value. Stayed alive for over an entire card cycle. And we were just able to keep supporting him and keep getting those really nice trades as we attacked. So that's how you want to play this deck, and we'll go into some live games to try and uh, demonstrate it even more. Alright, so we're going into our first game here against Luis with some symbols. So with this hand, uh, he's going to play make a play a minor, and I was a little bit late on my ice goal in there. My hands weren't ready, honestly. So we just barbell that to try not to take too, too much damage. Um, so we have a sort of threatening push, not really though. So he's going to go in with Skeleton Dragon, so I'm going to go with a high Magic Archer, and I think it's going to be Lava with minor. Um, so we're going to simp for the Magic Archer, always always going to be doing that. Play a Lumberjack in front, and let's see what he's going to do. If he goes with the Lava, I'm going to Ram Rider, and actually, yeah, he's going to go with that Lava. I knew he's going to go with the Lava, so I was getting ready to place the Ram Rider anyway. He's going to go with this Cage. So this Magic Archer is now going to kill the Brawler and get a lot of damage on the Hound, and it might actually be yeah, it's perfectly out of tower range, so he now has to spend even more Elixir to kill it, which is absolutely phenomenal for me. So I think I can kite this Inferno Dragon away with an... Actually, no, I can't. Okay. So we're just going to pull it as far as we can. I'm not able to kite it, but we're just going to go with our own Inferno Dragon and see if we can beat out like a minor. Yep, perfect. He's going to go with his minor, and I'm just going to fireball the pups. Oh, really great zap on his end. That was really well played, that zap just last second. So we took a lot of damage. We lost our tower, but I'm going to try and Lumberjack, pull everything back, and yeah, it forces out some Skeleton Dragons, and we're going to get some nice damage back. So this game is not over. As soon as those Skeleton Dragons kind of get out of the way, I'm going to play my Bandit. Hopefully force out like a cage or something. Pull one back. I want to try and get the Bandit in the Rage for just a second, and he fireballs it. Okay. So we're just going to try and continually pressure him and try and take this tower out if we can. It might be kind of difficult since he's got the cage, and I believe he's going to have some barbs. So we're just going to play a Bar Barrel here. He's going to have to either ignore that or spend something negative or make a negative trade on it. So now I'm going to go in with a Ram Rider. Perfect timing. We punish him straight as he lavas. And let's see what he's going to do. Is he going to let it go? No, he plays this cage. So I can't Magic Archer Chip however much I'd like to. And we're just going to have to set up for a defense here. So I'm going to go with the Lumberjack. And then I'm going to go with a Magic Archer. And we're going to have to be ready to protect this Magic Archer. Play my Bandit preemptively. And I have to Fireball this Balloon right now. It does get one hit, which is unfortunate. But we're actually going to try and go in... Uh, actually, I can't go in. Um, we'll go with a Bar Barrel here. 
And then I'm going to pressure him in both lanes now. So he's going to go in like that. We need to get his tower now. So I'm just going to go all in over in this lane. Maybe we can take. Here, come on, Ram Rider. Charge. Oh, it didn't even get a hit. So that's going to be GG's. Well played to him. Um, definitely just that really, really nice zap. That was a phenomenal zap on my opponent's end. And he was just able to basically win the game with that zap. He took the whole tower because I fireballed and I didn't hit the pups. So again, really well played to him. And I'll catch you guys in the next game. I'm going to leave this in just because of that outplay. That was really nice. And you guys need to make sure that you're always ready for that kind of stuff. He caught me without, he caught me when I was not ready and I paid the price for it. So you, it's just kind of like a learning experience, you know, always make sure that everything goes uh, the way you want it to before you play like a fireball or something. All right, so we're in our next game here against the law. So with this starting hand, I'm really not going to make a play for the first um, 10 or 15 seconds to see what he's got. And then if he doesn't do anything and he's going to go with a barbell, so patience was rewarded because I didn't have to cycle a magic archer, but I would have cycled the magic archer next. So he goes with an inferno dragon all the way in the back. Now it's best if I go with my magic archer first to see what he's playing and then maybe and then cycle my inferno dragon so that maybe I can protect the magic archer farther back and build up a bigger put counter push. So it looks like he's going to be playing eagle and rage. So we need to keep this magic archer alive and I failed the protection but it's not going to die. Um This could be really bad for us here and he's actually going to just pump. So I'm going to take this fireball. Magic archer is getting geometry and I would protect him, but he's a little bit too high on the arena. So we're just going to play a barbell and actually he's not playing exactly Eagle and Rage here because the Eagle and Rage obviously doesn't have a pump and you don't play a barbell in Eagle and Rage. So we're just going to chill here um, and there's the Eagle and so we need to punish him really hard opposite lane. I can't let him build up this big push. There's the E-Drag. That's going to mean my life is a lot easier now that he's wasted both the healer and the E-Drag opposite lane. All I have to do really is go in with a Magic Archer here. And then um, probably just gonna kite. Yeah, we're just gonna kite everything to the center. Magic Archer is gonna get a ton of val geometry value, and then we're gonna have to go with the bandit. And hopefully, this guy has to be enough to defend here. And it doesn't look like it's going to be, but I am gonna try and fireball with the elixir blobs. Come on, bandit. Okay, we fireball as soon as we can, and we don't lose our tower. But we're not gonna like. We we had to spend a little bit too much there for me to really utilize this bandit on the counter push. I will barbell though. And we don't actually kill his barb, so that was a great heal spear on his end. Now, I'm just going to Lumberjack the bridge. I'm not going to Ram Rider because he's got E-Dragon Cycle. I just received... Yeah, he thought I was going to Ram Rider, so we're just trying to bait out all of his units. And now, I just need to get my um, Magic Archer back in Cycle. Or my Fireball, excuse me. Unfortunately, he does get the heal spear off. But we're just going to try and hold everything up at the bridge. And this Eagle Golem is doing so much damage, man. Takes the whole tower. So Ice Golem, um, I'm just going to play our Inferno Dragon back here. Since he used the E-Drag, we have to go in opposite lane now. The Magic Archer is still alive, so we can just kind of spam him here. He's going to get back to his E-Drag, but we are going to take this tower for sure. Um, he plays his E-Drag there. Interesting that he didn't commit to that. Wow, he's still committing. So we might actually be able to come back and win this game now. So he doesn't have an E-Dragon cycle. His first E-Drag is almost dead. We're going to go Ice Golem, Ram Rider, Lumberjack. He doesn't have his E-Drag back in cycle yet. Here comes the E-Spirit, or the Heal Spirit, I should say. And then we're going to ban it, protect this Magic Archer. And then we're going to Fireball the E-Drag because it's going to die to a Fireball right here. Hopefully, yes, it does die to a Fireball. So we're getting some damage back. But I really need to be careful, because if he goes Eagle Golem in the pocket, I could be done for. So he's just going to do a high magic archer, begin killing that. And he's got a faster cycle than me. So we really need to just like not do anything stupid here. We don't want to go in again, especially into that battle healer. So I'm fine that he's going to go and try and kill that. That's really nice for me. And then I'm just going to play my Ice Golem and kite this E-Drag away. So we're going to cycle back to our next magic archer here. And this is looking pretty decent, uh, I would say, for the moment. He's going to NATO all that in, but that's fine. We just cycle another Inferno Dragon in the back. And since he used his healer, oh, he's actually going to go in with this push. But he doesn't have an E-Drag because it's going to die to my king. We're just going to take this Fireball. 
And then since his e golem is taking so long to die, or everything's taking so long to die, we can just kind of do this. And then we're going to go Lumberjack Ram Rider here. All in here. And then we're going to Fireball. And I think we should be able to win. He doesn't have anything for the moment. We Fireball. Ram Rider connects. 145 HP. And we get the win. A very nice comeback victory there. So you could see, just like, when he cycled those healers in the back, I really needed to make sure I wasn't going in. Because I would just give him healer value, none of his units would die, even if I fireballed, he'd nato all my stuff, bar barrel it, and then he'd go with an eagle and then I'd instantly lose. So it was a really nice game right there, we just played passive, we got the damage we needed, we knew we could just wait for the right opportunity to go in, and then when he gave it to me with that last eagle, and we were able to go in, take the tower right there, and that was just a really nice game to demonstrate against a pretty difficult matchup what you need, be, what you need to be doing. Alright, so we're going into our final game of the video here against Goliath. I think he meant to say Goliath from Muerte Dulce. I believe that means sweet death in Spanish, so kind of edgy clan name right there. So we'll just catch this bandit with, or catch this miner with our bandit, excuse me. And we're just going to see what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to wait for him to make the next play, so he's going to go with the log. Uh, I don't really want to cycle my Inferno Dragon right now. I don't know what he's playing. Uh, I could need that. So since he has damage, we're just going to Lumberjack. I don't have anything else in my hand. I don't want to spend 8 Elixir on a split wall breakers. So we're just going to let that happen. He's probably going to activate King. Yes, he does. So now since he spent that much Elixir, I'm fine cycling my Inferno Dragon. I know what he's got, and I know it's not going to be uh, that intent. Like, I'm not going to need the Inferno Dragon that badly. So we'll just take the Fireball and this Magic Archer, and then he's going to have to spend on the Inferno Dragon. And then when he spends, we'll Magic Archer and then catch his Miner. So, actually, he might not even minor with just one Spear Goblin. No, he goes in over there. So, hopefully his Magic Archer shoots them both, or it shoots one. That's not terrible. Um, since he's given me the Magic Archer value, I want to go in for a Ram Rider Lumberjack here, but I can't. I don't. Have, I obviously don't have the Elixir, so we're just going to chill. We need to be really passive in this matchup. We need to wait for our opportunity, and I think this is going to be our opportunity. So, he just went super aggressive there, and he still has to spend on my Bandit. So we're going to go Lumberjack Ram Rider over here. And there are the Spear Goblins. The Bomb Tower comes in. Nice uh, catch on the Lumberjack. And that King Tower activation is not even going to let me get any damage on either lane. But we did force out a lot of Elixir. And we just need to make sure we are ready with the Bar Barrel for the Wall Breakers. I'm actually going to go with the High Magic Archer because I think he's going to go Wall Breakers soon. And this should at least deny the lane for a little bit. I can't afford to take any more of those stupid Wall Breaker connections. Um, so we're just going to go Bar Barrel. And then we're going to go with a... Um, bandit if he goes in so i feel like he, excuse me he's getting ready to go in so we're just cycling our ice golem in the back perfect and we do catch the miner with that so bandit's gonna kill those we go with the lumberjack and unfortunately i have to leave this push again i really wish i could keep i support it but i just can't afford to let him go or get the bomb tower down so we'll just magic archer here and then we'll take the fireball and he's gonna try and miner he's gonna get some damage here so we're just gonna ice golem low Block the knight. Actually, I need to keep uh, playing stuff because of the spear goblins. So now we need to take this opportunity in front of dragon. So he can't really kill that. Um, just go with our magic archer here and then barbarrel, and then we can go with the lumberjack. And we're going to win this bridge battle pretty handily. We do have the magic archer alive. We do have the lumberjack coming across the bridge. But again, I can't support this because he's just going to be able to kill everything with a bomb tower. So we'll go with our bandit here. And then we're going to cycle our Inferno Dragon in the back again. And not a good wall breakers by him. And he's just spending so much Elixir here. So I think this is our time to go in now. I think with all this Elixir that we've just gotten, it's time to go in. We can't afford to wait really much longer. So we're going to go with our um, Magic Archer to kill this Bomb Tower. And then we're going to go with a Bandit. And I think we're actually going to be able to break through. Bomb Tower is already dead. Ram is all coming in. A great NATO for him. And... But the Ram Rider pushes everything out of the way. Everything is on the tower, and with one push, we come back and win. Wall Breakers are a really difficult matchup just because it's they outcycle your answers, and the Bomb Tower is so hard to break through. But we were able to do it. We were able, again, patience is key with this deck. You need to wait for that opportunity, stay passive, and then when your opponent makes that big mistake, that big overcommit, you go in, you punish them, take the tower in one push against really bad matchup. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this was a ton of fun to make. Um, ton of fun to hopefully share some great tips with you for this deck. Hope you guys have some success with it in the arena, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.